Welcome back to How Soccer Explains Leadership. Thanks again for being a part of this show. Paul and I absolutely love getting to do this. I'm Phil Dark. If this is your first episode, welcome. We are at yet another end of another great season. Season six, we are just finishing up. We've had some great interviews with Shea Haddow and Dion Von Mulkey and, and Mike Semenza and Christian DeVries and George Blameau, and, and we're going to talk about all those today. It's just such a great half of this season. And this season also saw Paul and I doing our first interview together, which was pretty cool. Not this half, but this season. You got to, you got to see, I want, to, I want to clarify that. But, you know, before we get into it, I, I just get excited every time because you know what these post-match shows mean is that I get to have a conversation with Paul and you get to hear that. So what another great day we're going to have today. Paul, how are you doing? Doing great, Phil. Excited about another another show for us to talk and definitely to go back to the other half of the season where we got to do one together. That was great. And I'm hoping we can do some more of those moving forward as I'm sure, I'm sure that we will because that was a lot of fun. It's always a, a hard getting schedules all together, but definitely fun when we got to do that. Definitely fun. We get to sit here and uh, talk together about these last four interviews that that you had that were just again another fantastic half season yeah and it's exciting too because we are coming up on 100 episodes which is just insane crazy yeah it's crazy how fast time goes but we we're this is going to be episode 88 which is unbelievable we're gonna have to figure out something cool to do on episode 100 but folks if you have any ideas on that any like you know if you can get us in touch with pele or something that'd be pretty cool to be able to do that but but we'll we'll see we'll see what we can do there and we're going to have another great season in season seven when we get there, but we're going to have a little break over the summer where we're going to be having some of those lost episodes of Coaching Character. Coaching Character podcast, which I teased back in the first 10 or so episodes of How Soccer Explains Leadership, never really got off the ground, but we are going to share with you the interviews that we did do for coaching character over the next few weeks of this summer. And so I hope you enjoy those. I think they're going to be great content for you to be able to do. Most of those interviews are actually interviewing American football coaches and players, but we can learn a lot of lessons from them. The other football, as we like to say on this show, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it should be a lot of good stuff for you to be able to learn. So I, I just wanted to give a heads up on that, what's coming up this summer. So if you're listening in this summer and you're confused, that seems like it's this other podcast. It's not. It's still us bringing it. I just think it's such great content. I would hate for it to not be heard. And I think that each of you out there will be able to learn a ton from that too. So Paul, you know, we, we have the last month or so, I know you've had a pretty cool trip that you've been able to go on with your family and with some other folks with Warrior Way. Can you share with a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we took our nonprofit side of, of Warrior Way Soccer is Warrior Way Gives. And we took about 22 folks of really all ages down to Guatemala, just outside of uh, Antigua to serve the community there and the villages, some of the villages there through the game of soccer. And uh, as I say, all ages, it includes my kids, ages five to 13 were there. And really, as you know, when you go to serve, you come back being served. And it's just an amazing experience. We were able to serve and work with a amputee soccer team uh, down in Guatemala. Uh, I think they actually represent Guatemala in the amputee games from there, but a great group of uh, adults there we got to, to work with. Did some coaching clinics with some, some coaches from the youth level up to professional, and then got into the some of the villages and worked with some of the youth and, and children there, provided some shoes, and started a, the coolest thing is we started a tournament that'll be an annual tournament with some of these kids from these out, outermost villages and even an orphanage. They get to come in and compete against each other. Uh, and what's cool about that is it just sounds like a normal, a normal thing, but a lot of these villages, uh, this tournament, this is the first time these kids had ever left their village. You know, we sent a bus, picked them up, gave them shoes, gave them jerseys, and they came, they're normally competing on you know, dirt fields. And all of a sudden they're on this turf, uh, artificial turf, and uh, even took them out for, for pizza after just experiences that we take for granted daily here in the States, for sure. And a lot of other parts of the world, but experience we were able to provide for them and you know show them them and their families the, the love of Jesus as well while we were there and these families are living in huts no running water just the experience is and just they have such joy so again brought a lot back from that excited to with our partners with FCA Guatemala they're there some other great partners had a great time and 
folks, if they want more information to see what we were doing down there, can connect through our Instagram, Warrior Way Soccer and Warrior Way Gives, and they can follow kind of what was going on, but really, really cool experience for, for all of us that were there. Yeah, you know, it was fun. It was fun to follow that. And I, I, I especially love seeing your kids and just them diving right in and your youngest in particular. He's, he, you know, I remember taking my youngest down to Honduras and seeing that he was two at the time. I mean, your, your, your youngest is a little older than that, but just being able to see them dive in and, and as, as they say, like a child, right? Be able to go in yeah. and see through the eyes of a child is, is just awesome to be able to do that. So you can kind of you can kind of follow along and see a little bit through the eyes of a child because, you know, people are people. And that's some of the yeah. things that I would love my kids learning and love for all of us to learn, right? As we're doing these different things around the world, as we're doing these things in different parts of our country here in the U.S., to know that, you know, we're no better, worse, whatever. You know, a lot of these mental health things are coming from us feeling inferior or feeling not enough, you know, and I think that's something that we can, we can be able to do for each other all around the world is to be able to help people understand that, that we are all broken. We are all messed up and we all have great gifts that we can, that we can give. And so what does that look like? And so I, I, I just yeah. love seeing that. Yeah, love- even a side note, something that came out of that. And of course we do a lot of, Warrior Way Gives does a lot of stuff here in Waco too. It's not just international, mm-hmm. but what's interesting is people sometimes are way more comfortable going out of country uh, to serve people that are so, yeah. so different from them. But we have a hard time really relating to people sometimes that are just more like us in our own mm-hmm. communities. Uh, and that's something that we brought back, just kind of saying, okay, you know, even in the ministry work that we're doing here in, in Waco through through the sport of soccer, you know, how can we take that same energy and excitement and, those, you know, breaking down those barriers a lot easier. And like you said, learning from the kids where, you know, for us, the greatest barrier probably is language over there. But for the kids, it wasn't, it didn't matter. You know, right. the language barrier didn't matter. But even here in the States, when we're serving in our own community, there is no language barrier. It's just usually a, you know, economic barrier or whatever. But at the end of the day, like you said, we're all people, we're all made in God's image. And we've got to, you know, put things out there and, and work together to to be the best community that we can be. So really cool, cool environments, and great learning lessons through that, through that week down in Guatemala. Yeah, you said that about Image Bear. It reminded me, I was just listening to a book by Andy Crouch, who's one of my favorite authors, just a great, great man as well. And one of the things that he talked about in in his newest book, and I'm actually forgetting the title at this point, but he said one day he was just walking through the airport and wanted to go for a walk, but he's like, it's not necessarily the best, you know, views in airports. So he said, but instead he just decided he was just going to see every person as an image bearer. And so he literally walked by every person and and just looked at them and saw, and just said to himself, image bearer. And I was just like, if we just did that more often, I mean, not every day, you wouldn't get anything done, but to be able (laughs) to understand and remember that, like, you know, we're not just because we have a title, just because we do certain things, just because we're better at certain things than others, just because you're a good soccer player, just because you're a good singer, just because you're a good actor, whatever, doesn't make you better, right? right? As a, just a, you're an image bearer and then you have your giftings that you can use, you know, for, for God's glory, you can use to help you flourish. What does that look like in your different life? You know, well, that's, that's what we can hopefully help each other do, whether it's, and I, I love what you just said there, because that's something that I've really, you know, thought a lot about lately. Cause I do most of what I do is around the world, like outside of my backyard. And I've just during COVID seen so many opportunities because I haven't been able to travel and to be able to say, okay, what does that look like to do that in my own backyard? So folks encourage you to do that as well. It's been kind of fun though. Okay. I I mean, you know, first of all, I don't, I don't want to, if people are wondering like what Jersey does Phil have on today? Totally. And and I'm just, you know, so the coolest thing about this is I was looking through my closet day, knowing we're recording. I'm going, what am I going to wear? And I looked and I saw this jersey. It's the Sacramento Republic jersey. And I'm like, well, I got to wear this because we got to celebrate the Sac Republic victory over the LA Galaxy. Now, LA Galaxy fans right now are going, I'm not going to celebrate that with you. And that's fine. You don't have to. I don't expect you to. But literally everyone else in the country, neutrals abound, are saying, go USL team. They just beat LA Galaxy in the quarterfinals of the Lamar Hunt US Open, which is, that's what's the beauty of the US Open, right? It's like, it's like FA Cup when those the championship teams or, or six division teams, for that matter, are beating the Premier League teams like that is an amazing, cool accomplishment. So go Republic. I just want to, you know, let's keep rooting them on. Neutrals out there are going to be definitely behind 
the Republic and let's go, let's go Sacramento. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd get behind the underdog, you know, any day of the week. I know, you know, one of our guests over these last four weeks was Mike Zemenza and he worked a lot with LA galaxy. He may not feel the same way as we do right now, but he probably uh, won't, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, Mike, we love you. We love you, but you know, I'm, I'm just excited. And it also had one of the great little videos that's going around gotten viral as the Sacramento Republic. guy also pulled the name R and rolled about 10 times after barely getting touched. And he did that thing where he peeked up after he, you know, to see if, if it got any action from the ref. And unfortunately, the ref was right on top of him when he peeked. So it, it's a it's a funny little video. You That's can check awesome. that out. That's also the Republic guy, too. So lots of airtime for the Republic. And, and you know, it, and the, the city needs something because we, we you know, it, the, the MLS bid kind of got pulled out from under the city. And that was it's a great, you know, soccer town. And it was a big bummer. So to have something like this has been good to revive that excitement of the beautiful game in Sacramento. It's good for the game in general. So yeah. always excited about those. And I think I don't I don't think it says anything less about the level of the MLS. I think it says a lot about the level of sport soccer in general that are some of our you know consider second second divisions or whatever are having some success. And I think you know even our team down in San Antonio does a great job competing against the Austin team and some of those things. So you're seeing that more and more across the country. And I don't think that is saying anything negative about the MLS. I think it's just saying the game in general is growing and developing. And I think that's really, really exciting. Yeah, it's a great thing. So, all right. So now you, you kind of tease the, the episodes, you know, I did it a little bit earlier as well. So let's, let's just go through that, those episodes and just, we don't need to go in order necessarily, but we did, we had Shea Hada, we had Mike and Dion you know, the first auto racer, car racer on how soccer explains leadership. That's one that people may not have thought we'd ever have. And I, I love that interview. George yeah. Blameau, man, that's, that's a guy I actually talk about FCA Guatemala. He's FCA Liberia. And then Christian DeVries, who's my, who I'm doing coaching the bigger game with was the last interview we did. So just throw that all out to you and say, what, you know, what stood out to you of those interviews and we can go through each of them eventually, but what, what were yeah. some of those things that just jumped out at you as like the highlights from the, this, this half of the season? There's just a wealth of information uh, in these podcasts and that's, that's nothing new. I mean, these four just, just as, you know, information, you know, overload as some of the other ones for me, because I'm just absorbing and, and absorbing. But I think for me that the main one that stands out and they're all fantastic, but George, I mean, just his experience. And I think, we learn so much as humans by learning from other people's experiences. And I, I mean, mission trips are similar to that, where you go and you, you pour into other, you know, not pour, not as much pouring into other people, but learning what other people are doing, what their lives are like, and just hearing George talk and how he, you know, did so much to get himself out of, you know, a poverty situation and changed not only just his life, but the trajectory of the lives of his family moving forward, you know, and a lot of that through the game of soccer you know, getting connected through soccer and through the Liberian national team and then becoming, you know, an ambassador to the UN and, you know, and now how he's just, he's not like this, you know, he's got all these degrees now as an older guy, what in his forties getting his master's degree, but at every turn, people tell him, no, you can't do it. No, you can't do it. No, you can't do it. And he's like, watch me. I think he even said that he's like, yeah, watch me. Right. You know, to, to one point where it's like, people have been telling me that my whole life, like, just watch me. I'm just going to go do this. But I think I find stories like that and people like that to be very, very motivating just because now, you know, he could be doing who knows what, but he's, he is choosing to serve. He's choosing to, to take these experiences and the things that he's learned and give back to others and help them kind of springboard and give them the opportunities maybe he didn't have or luckily did get or people didn't have so that they can then experience that too. So I love I love that you know he's taken you know uh, just a crazy crazy experience of being told no you can't do this to now turning the tide of now telling young people yes you can do this uh, look what I was able to do and you've got more opportunity than me. Let's, you know, let's change the world basically. But I loved, I loved George's interview and I'll probably go back and listen to it again because of his, because of his accent. I think I missed a few things. Yes. I will go back again and like, you know, really listen to that again. So I make sure I'm not missing any golden nuggets that maybe slipped through the cracks. On that note, I did spend a lot of time folks. So please, please use it on the transcript for that episode. Oh, yep. 
So the, the subtitles on the YouTube are automatic subtitles, unfortunately, but the transcript, you can follow along on the transcript. And I do encourage you to do so because there's so much in that episode that's phenomenal. But you can get that transcript just at HowSoccerExplainsLeadership.com. You can go to that episode in the show notes. The transcript is there. So you can check that out. I do do transcripts for every episode. If you didn't know that, I take time on those. So please use those if that's something that you'd want to check out. But And if you want to go and get quotes, if you want to do all that stuff, you can go get that at the, at the website. All the different resources and everything are all in those show notes as well. I don't say that enough on the episode. I don't think that, that there's just a wealth of resources that are in those show notes of all the different episodes that we've done. So I agree that George, man, I was, I was blown away by his story and just the great man that he is. And I'm getting, and now we have a, a friendship that we've developed just over WhatsApp and, and being able to hear, I mean, please be praying for him. He just recently lost his mother unexpected just this last week. And so hmm. just a huge, you know, it's, it's it, nothing can prepare us for that as, as, you know, I know that I lost my mom last year and, and it wasn't as sudden as his, it was a heart attack, but but uh, that's something that we, you know, this things happen. And, and I, no doubt he's talk about resilience. That guy, a lot of people talk about resilience on that show. That guy has lived, he's like lived example of resilience, right? When somebody literally comes up to him and says, you can't do it because of X, Y, Z. And he's like, whatever, whatever. I don't believe that. I mean, and, and it's just amazing to see how he has, also taken the lessons he's learned from the game and he's given back to those youth mm -hmm. that are likely hearing the same things that he heard as a kid yeah. right so for him to be able to come into that and go hey guys people are going to tell you all kinds of stuff but and it might not be soccer that is where you're making it but he's teaching them those life lessons if you didn't look at that whole life coaching manual that i that i posted as well he, every single like thing in soccer he has taken. And that's what this show is all about is how soccer explains life and leadership, right? So he's taken like shooting, as he said, for responsibility, passing to teach service, you know, being able to have, you know, humility and, and selflessness and all these different things that he's teaching these kids in Liberia and other parts of the world. And then become a UN ambassador. Like, are you kidding me? Like this uh, dude who was told he'd never <laughs> go to school and finish yeah. college. Not only did he get a double master's, but then he gets UN ambassador on food and security. Like, it's just, that's where I look at it and go, folks, if you're not encouraged by that, I don't think you're breathing. And so I, if you didn't listen to that one, go back. And if there's one episode, I actually just posted on something, one of the social media outlets that this might be the most important episode we've released on this show for all the reasons that we've talked about, but just to, to show that and be able to overcome odds and overcome things. We have a lot of first world problems that we talk about, and he's got those, a lot of those same problems, plus a whole lot more that we don't ever face here in the U S. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I encourage you to go check out that, check out that interview and just get encouraged and get motivated and get challenged to, to, to be better. And to not listen to people when they say you can't make it, you know, if you really feel like you got it in you, then you got to overcome that and keep going and keep going and keep pushing. So anyway, that, yeah, I love that interview. One of my favorite, one of my, definitely one of my favorites of, of all time. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's a, a great one to, to listen and re-listen. And I think if, if anything, there might be some folks that come away from that episode, kind of even just rethinking kind of what they complain about you know, or it, it could challenge you to say, okay, like I can do, I can do more than what I'm doing. I think it's a very challenging, you know, depending on how your mindset is and what you're thinking. But I know I kind of came away from it a little bit saying, okay, I think there's more that I can do, you know, coming off the heels of, of being in Guatemala. I think the timing for me was really kind of a cool to hear that, but you know, we could probably talk about George's all day because yeah. it is probably one of the more influential ones we've had in a long time, which encourage people to definitely listen to to that one for sure, but, you know, not the only one that of these four that has kind of overcome some challenges to then be able to give back. I think Shay is another, another example of that in her own right of how she kind of overcame some obstacles to now provide, you know, a confidence coach, especially for young women and mentoring young women just out of through her trials and tribulations too. kind of like George taking, taking the experiences they've had and then 
rising through it and rising above it and then turning around and giving those experiences back to another generation um, to maybe soften the soften the transition for a lot of other people. So I think she was another really good example of that as well. Yeah, Shay was one that I was again, I mean, encouraged by all these all these folks and 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 challenged in different ways. And I, I think Shay was one, like you just said, to overcome again, adversity, resilience. We we had that really. We we interviewed her. I don't think it it necessarily, I don't remember exactly when it released, but it was like part of the mental health awareness month concept and just being able like that confidence, like you said, the confidence coach, something that can be taught, can be learned. There are some who we know are, you know, born a little bit more confident. Sometimes, as I talked about, delusional sometimes. And uh, we think about it and there, there is that fine line between confidence and delusion a lot of times. But, uh, but I, I do think that to be able to understand that confidence usually comes from doing things a lot over and over and over again and being able to study and being able to practice and being able to you know, do things, you know, there are some kids who don't practice at all and are just think they're the best in the world. And again, I think that's delusional, but most of the time, the confidence comes from mastering stuff and that takes yeah. time and that takes yeah, effort. We, we always talked about, you know, I just tell my players, I'm not worried about you being confident necessarily, because it's hard to be confident. Like you said, it takes training. It's over and over and over, but I want you to be determined. Yes. Don't worry about being confident, be determined because that determination will push you to do things over and over again. And then you'll find yourself later, like, yeah, I, I've, whether you want to use the word confident or not, like I feel better doing that now. I'm more secure in, in doing that. And that could be even, you know, if, when kids, you know, we're just coming out, you know, we're past June 15th, a good week and a half now, but June 15th was the first date of contact for rising juniors in high school from college coaches. And that's something that, you know, we work with and some of the clubs that I work with is role play. You know, hey, you you're not comfortable talking to adults or college coaches. Well, let's role play and let's get that over and over and over again so that you are now you know, that determination of pushing forward to get through that uncomfort zone into a comfort zone is really important. So I like how you said that, if you said over and over and over again to build what we could say confidence, but being determined in those moments to push through those things is really, really important. And I think the work that, that, that Shay is doing is, is really, really important for for the, especially the young women that she's working with uh, right now. Yeah. That's one of the cool things, folks. So if you didn't listen to Shay's interview, go, you know, if you, especially if you have young women in your life, whether they're daughters, whether you're a coach, whatever she, she specializes in, in the girls, in the girls game and, and young women. And I encourage you to check that out. Even one of my friends has said, you know, he and his, his wife listened to it and they had their daughter listen to it and they, they bought her book and, and got really encouraged by it because, you know, she, she's experienced a lot of it and she, she gets it and she's been able to write different things and she's got her podcast and she's got some other stuff. So go check that out. If you haven't already very, very good interview, just to be able to encourage us to, to, yeah, to, to really work on that confidence piece, which is, which is very important for all of us. So what yeah. do you think of Dion and Mike? That was, that was kind of a, a different interview, but a fun one. I, I really enjoyed doing it. I don't, I don't know about you, but it was, you were listening, but what do you think of that interview? I think it's great. I mean, I, I love, I love the, the, the race car piece of it. You know, I'm, I am by nature, I am not a thrill seeker by any means, but I, I, I love people that are. And, and I think that, you know, really more importantly, what, what they're doing, and I'm assuming it, it, and I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it came through, through COVID and everything like that, but the experience that they're providing players or students or kids really of any sport, whether it's race car driving or soccer, or there's some other sports that they do as well, providing those services is really a, a unique, I think a pretty cool idea, uh, really a cost savings for some families too, that one-on-one -on -one coaching that's, you know, a little bit cheaper online, I would think, than, than ha hiring somebody to come to your house or meet you at a field or whatever. But it was a great interview. I mean, you've got the, the race car experience and then you've got you know, Mike, who, you know, has the, the soccer experience with his time with the LA Galaxy is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I, I think it's a, it's a very cool, like you said, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good word for it. it. It's a cool way to be able to have guys who, you know, have been through a lot of it. And there are a lot of people that do want that just that higher level and don't aren't able to get that training in different parts of the country. I think where, where you are, where I am, 
it's it's a bit more readily available like texas california florida probably but if you're you know midwest if you're in the you know north north northeast i mean north some of the northeast it has has it but it doesn't there's not as accessible and even in california it's not in some parts and so or if you just want a different coach sometimes just hearing a different coach in a different angle now what i don't encourage parents to do is is like coach shop and go well my coach said my my kid's not that good so now i'm gonna go to somebody else and you know until i find one that is you know it's like the person who keeps going back for different diagnoses at a doctor because they don't like what they're hearing like you know be realistic yeah. but if you know if your kid's at that level where you just want to have somebody else look at it, i think it's a phenomenal idea even for that purpose so so that's something that that i, I really enjoy yeah. but I, I also enjoyed hearing just his just dion's like you know what do you learn from crashing like what you know like these different these different parts <laughs> of that we don't get a lot of that in, I mean, it's like every day you go out, you literally could die in a car crash because you hit the wall and it's, it's just a normal thing in car racing. So what do you think of that part? It's awesome. And I was, I was on the phone earlier today with somebody else and we were talking about, you know, allowing people to fail and obstacles and all those things. And I don't think we, I hate to say celebrate, but we don't celebrate those things enough because we live in a society now where everything in front of us is perfect and going really well. But the reality is like to be able to be successful, you've got to have some failures and you've got to have some crashes. Uh, hopefully they're not, you know, he's, he's living on, on a thin line of, you know, you know, tempting death at times with racing cars as fast as they do. But I do think those, those are learning moments, you know, and if I, I would, I don't think he said it, but I think I would, I would absolutely believe that he would agree that with that crash, he and his team learned something, Yeah, you know, I mean, it, what not to do the next time, but even in that conversation, you know, with Mike and you're talking about the coaches and the going back and forth, one of the things I was actually listening for and it, it came through and I was excited about it. I was like, okay, what's that relationship between their real coach and these trainers that are on video? And I love Mike's answer to that was that, you know, he talked a lot about like, listen, we're not trying to replace their coach. We're not even trying to, you know, go against what their coaches say. It's a different perspective, but players, you know, I've always said this to kids that I'm recruiting that I don't know very well. They'll say, Hey, what do I need to work on? Well, your club coach or the club, the coach that you work with the most is the one that knows you the best. Mm -hmm. You know, I can look at a game and I can give you some ideas of what I thought in that one or two games that I've seen or a training environment, which is what I think their coaches are doing, analyzing film and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you know, I love what they say is like, Hey, your coach is your coach. And we're providing supplemental things and maybe a different set of eyes and maybe we see something different, but really gave that, you know, for lack of a word, maybe power back to coaches. Hey, we're not trying to replace your coach, but we're just a, an opportunity to, to help you get better or another set of eyes or whatever. And I thought that was important. I was actually listening to see if, if, if that was hit or not. And I think it was hit really, really well, which made me value what they're doing even more than, Hey, we're the, we're the, we're the experts. Hey, what yeah. we say, you know, you go back and, Go back and tell your coach what I said. Now, that's right. not happening. And as a coach, that's extremely valuable to know that you've got people that can partner with you as coaches to help these kids develop, you know, not only as, as players, but as people. Yeah. And that's how I see the high school, like as a high school coach, it's the kind of the same thing. Like I get, I get these kids for three months and from the standpoint of, of teaching them, I tell them, look, if, if I say something that's different from your coach, like talk to them about it. And see what they say. And if you like doing it the way they do it better, great. And if you like doing it the way that I do it better and it works better for you, great. But don't, you know, don't feel like what I'm saying and, oh, I can't listen to you and just ignore. No, it's like there's different philosophies on a lot of these things. And so to be able to hear that and to be able to put that together and you know that the best players in the world are a mix of all the coaches they've ever had. Mm -hmm. And because if they were exactly the same player as the, one of their coaches, the, the only one coach that they listen to all the time, then they'd be a lesser version of that coach. And yeah. so the fact is that the way that you improve upon even your coaches, and that's what every coach will say is, I hope my players are way better than I was. Absolutely. Right? And that's a coach's, a good coach's dream is that all their players are better than they were as a, as a coach, no matter who they, like Zidane coaching. He wants yeah. his players to be better than he was, right? And that's, yeah. that's a high standard. But if he's a great manager, a great coach, he'll be able to, to get that in some of those players. So anyway, I, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I thought it was cool too, just the, 
conversation with Mike about Zlatan in the locker room oh, and yeah. hearing that, like that was just fun to hear that because it surprised me, you know, I just, mm -hmm. I don't see him as that locker room leader. I have heard that I've heard stories, but nothing has backed that up in, in what I've seen. So anyway, what'd you think of that? It was great. I think you promised an episode of just you and him talking about Zlatan stories. So I think our listeners are probably going to expect that in the future, but no, it was cool. I mean, I think you, I, I think what's interesting in that, and this is this made me think of it, because I know plenty of professional players, and you know their personalities off the field is are normally different than their personalities yeah. on the field. Not always, but the ones like him and some other extremes that you wouldn't know what they're like in the locker room because you're not there. Yeah. And and I think players like that, they have to be different. They've got an on and off switch to where you know when they're on the field, they're going to be a certain type of player because they have to be. That's the role they have to play to be at their best. And then when they're in the locker room, it's okay that they have a different type of personality. Mm -hmm. But I, I love those types of players that can do that because there's a level of expectation on the field that he has for himself and he's going to excel and, and push himself in that way. And then to be able to kind of let the guard down a little bit in the locker room to be something different. The locker room needs something different than the field needs because you're not in the heat of competition uh, outside of those 90 minutes in the locker room, it needs something a little bit different. So the players that can't make that transition, that are the same person in the locker room as they are on the field, you don't want to be around those players all the time. You know, as Latana yeah. is one of those where you look at me and go, man, I wouldn't want to be around that guy in the locker room. It's good to hear that he's not that guy, you know, and, uh, but because he's that way in the locker room, it's probably why guys are fighting for him on the field. Yeah. Right. Like, yep. Oh yeah. I can get behind that. Yeah, Absolutely. So that was another great interview, you know, a lot of fun I had a lot of fun in that interview just because it was so different. And, and I have been watching F1 Drive to Survive, which I know is a very popular uh, mini series out there. I guess it's not mini series. It's different series seasons on Netflix. And yeah. so we've, that's it's on very, my list. I've got to watch that. Yeah. Highly recommended throughout the course of this show by several different guests we've had. So I, I've, and I, it's funny how many F1 fans there are now because of it. I see little, you know, high school, college girls with different like McCarran racing hats and Red Bull <laughs> racing hats. And I'm like, did you get that from your dad or something? Like, I, and they're like, no, I'm totally into it because of, because of F1, you know, Netflix, it's funny. It's just funny how, yeah. how these shows, I mean, then you're seeing that with these all or nothing shows on prime where people are getting into the premier league, getting into the all blacks, getting into these different things, these cricket documentaries, but, you know, getting, it's, it's kind of cool. People are understanding the sports more and understanding the people because, you know, it's more fun to root for people that you've actually seen and gotten to know a little bit. You feel like, you know, them a bit more. Oh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Especially and those I think, drivers, because you don't you don't oh, like, yeah. see them ever. You just see the car. So yeah, yeah. And just the it, people don't think of racing as a team sport, but yeah, the more you learn about it, the more you realize it is absolutely one of the maybe one of the greater team sports because of the things that have to be in place to have success. And that's yeah. you know I think I said that earlier when there's a, a crash, what does the team learn from that? And I think that's a a great a great lesson. I like I like that there's times where we can get outside of soccer. And take pieces from other sports and transit. I know I've done that a lot through some other sports is we can always learn from, from coaches and there you've said this through this podcast, I think a couple of times, like learning through other people's experiences. And I think that transitions well, really into, into your interview with Christian. I mean, that, that guy, I was fortunate to meet him finally back in the early part of the year when we we're at the coaches convention together, finally got to meet Christian and the guy is, you know, knowledge and wealth of information that he has, is is amazing you know and the stuff that he's put together that you guys talk about on the podcast you know even what you guys are doing together through coaching the bigger game like he's just got a wealth of experience and knowledge that I love that again sharing with people and the the reason he's doing it is you know all about making people better right and I, I just mm -hmm. I thought that um, that interview was great I think that you guys are, are doing some really great work with, you know, coaching the bigger game. And I encourage people to, to dive into that and learn more about that. But even some of the other things that he's, he's done in the past, uh, coaching collegiately and learning from others as well, you know, has been pretty impressive. So I thought it was a great, a great interview, wealth of knowledge and information. His insights on youth sports or youth soccer are, are interesting too, worth a listen just in, an, in and of itself, just talking through, you know, youth sports. Yeah. Yeah, he did a lot of that. I just want to go back real quick as you talked about yeah. the car racing being a yeah. 
being a team sport. And it's funny because we always, we often use analogies in soccer. Like it was working like a well-oiled machine, right? <laughs> yeah. And they literally have to have it working like a well-oiled machine. It is a well-oiled yeah. machine. And when point. they aren't, you know, so, and they also have to have the tires and all that, but it, it's, it, it does go back to the mechanics and the other people that you see. And we see that in soccer too, right? You got the kit, the, you know, if the kit men aren't doing their job, you don't have uniforms to play, right? If the physios aren't doing their job, if the trainers aren't doing their job and, and that goes back, you know, so many levels, you know, in, in sport and, and soccer is no exception. Racing's no exception, but yeah, back to Christian. I, I agree. I, I, you know, I've really come to really respect, and you know, he's a great friend. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing together if I didn't know that he is very, very wise. And he's got a great heart for, like you said, helping others. And that's where we come together. That's our common why is to help others flourish, right? And make good things better. We, we do that. And that's what I really love that that came out. His thought, I mean, he's very passionate about all these things, which comes across mm -hmm. in the interview, right? I mean, yes, talking about youth sports, talking about what he's doing. I mean, and it's funny because you meet him and, and you, you, you don't, he's a, you know, he's, he's coaching at Paradise Valley Community College and, and Phoenix has been doing that. He's, you know, both men's and women's program. He's coaching both. He loves his kids very well. He's very successful in all of that. And then, you know, he just, he texts me the other day. He goes, Oh yeah, I just, I just got inducted to the hall of fame. Of, oh no, he didn't even text me. He, I think it's somehow I saw it somewhere and I just texted him and said something. He goes, Oh yeah, yeah, that was, you know, it's cool. You know, and like, yeah, it's just, you don't, you don't see that on, on his side, but he's been able to start programs. He's been able to lead programs. He's been able to learn a ton from all of that. And that's what I love is we just get to share that. It's not like mm -hmm. we're, we're geniuses who are making up stuff, you know, no, it's, it's, we're learning. We've learned different stuff, leading the different things that we've led me leading nonprofits, me leading high school team, me leading a family, me leading other things, him leading his family and college teams and being able to come and both of us are trained in DISC and both of us are able to do these different things and to be able to say, how can we just use these things to help others not make a lot of the same mistakes we made and to be able to, you know, maximize what they have and all these tools in front of us, how can we help them navigate all these different things, you know, right, you know, and, and to be able to help younger college coaches and older college coaches alike, but high school coaches, club coaches, different people to be able to say, how can we help our kids to be the best they can be. And that does start with, as we've talked about over and over on the show, and as we start with on coaching the bigger game, and as Christian talked about, is with that self-leadership. How can you lead yourself to be the best you can be so that you can then lead your players and your team to excellence as well? But that can only come out of a healthy coach. And a lot of us are, are just barely getting by and that we have nothing left to give to our people. And that's, that's, yeah. that's hard, you know, because so much energy is given to recruiting. So much energy is given to the admin side of the job. So much energy, and you know this as a college coach, mm -hmm. right? And so, I mean, I don't know, speak to that a little bit. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that, just as far as, you know, how hard and taxing it is to be a coach who's able to do all those things really well, especially when you look at like high school coaches and other people who don't have a staff around them that what, what the value of something like this would be. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's huge. I mean, when you talk about, I think, you know, I do agree. I think a lot of people kind of look over the take care of me part first so that I can be the best for others. You know, I think if a lot of people overlook that because you want to be what you need to be for everybody else. So you just jump right into it and sometimes forget about the things that you need to do on a daily basis to make sure that you can be the best for others. And I know that just through my career in, in times where if I wasn't locked into my quiet times and things that I do to, to and exercising and eating well, if I wasn't locked into that, I wasn't as good of a coach. I wasn't as good for those that I was trying to serve and mentor and pour into. It just became very much a task of like, okay, I've got to get up and do these things. And just because it's my job and I've got to do it. And so many things can get in the way. Like you said, I mean, you've got when you get into coaching, you want to coach because you want to mentor and develop young people. And then as you go through it and it becomes a, a job, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but it becomes like your assignment, your job, then you've got 
recruiting, you've got compliance things to deal with, or you're dealing with parents, or if you're a coach that coaches by himself, you've got all these tasks and responsibilities to take care of before you even get to training. You know, you got to order equipment, you got to order uh, jerseys, you got to make sure the fields are lined, or maybe you have to cut the grass, or maybe, you know, all these other things are like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do that, or we won't be able to practice today. So I'm just going to bypass my quiet time. I'm going to bypass my time for me or, you know, I'm just going to drive through McDonald's real quick and grab something because um, that's just going to be quicker and I've got to manage my time better, you know, but in reality, you know, the times where I was the best and still, still now, you know, best for my family is when I've got my quiet time in order, my exercises in order, and I'm eating well and taking care of myself. And I think that um, like anything, programs like, like this that can help take the wisdom of others to pour into coaches to help remind most people know you know but they need a reminder they need the details they need the an abc plan or a way to really get to where they want to go and i think that that's where this becomes a huge benefit um and i, and I think even going back to to disc you know we can't have one of these talks without talking about disc of course but of course. um just knowing who you are and how how you're wired uh, is extremely extremely important so that you can be again back to what we want to do as coaches is to be the best for our players um and those things all lead lead to be able being able to do that at your at your best but you can't you can't you can't bypass yourself um I always think back to I don't know if you ever watched uh, the biggest loser um, we watched that for a lot, early on and it's thing. And the main topic of that, that would come up with some of these contestants was that they were so busy serving their families or serving their job or serving their kids, very, very important things in their lives that they neglected their own health. Mm -hmm. And of course, these are the extremes of the extremes, right? But the main thing that they started doing is like, they got them out of their home environments, isolated them and say, Hey, we're going to take care of you right now. And the success stories are the ones that could take that back into their practical lives and say, okay, now I can take care of me. Now I can be a better mom or dad or employee yeah. employer. And I think it's kind of the same, same idea. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you say that because I just saw, I don't remember if it was a meme or if it was like a Babylon, I can't remember what it was, but it basically said something like, you know, study shows bad, you know, if, if dads don't have a dad bod, they are, bad dads or something like that and i just thought that was funny but i thought about it for a minute and as we're talking about this i think i think it's to the contrary like if if the dad isn't taking care of himself he's not going to be as good of a dad and he's not modeling for his kids what they need to be doing either now there is an extreme right i mean if he's going out and he's training 20 hours a day and not and neglecting the kids that's a different that, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking, hey, go on a walk, be exercising, do your workouts, be in the word, be doing these other things that you want to model for your kids. Because do you want them to be healthy? Well, then you need to model health, right? Yeah. Do you want them to be eating well? Then you need to eat well. Do you want, you know, and most they say is abs comes in the kitchen, right? Like, mm -hmm. and health comes in all the different things. But if you're looking for the weight, most of that is what you're eating. And that's, that's discipline, right? So how are we showing our kids? And th there's so much, and there's more to it. I mean, I know there's other conditions, there's other things. So I get that this is a generalization, but, and to not to say that if you're fit, you're a great dad. That's not what I'm saying. That's a, that's a logical fallacy, folks. Don't, don't be, don't be doing that, that with what I said. But the reality is like, we need to be modeling for this. And if we're not healthy, we're going to be more stressed. We're going and healthy. I mean, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, every area. If we're not healthy, we're going to be stressed. We're going to be unhealthy in our personalities. As we're going to get angry faster. We're going to be more critical. We're not going to be, you know, very healthy. And, and oftentimes we withdraw depending on how you're wired from, from your kids. So that's something that well, I, for, you know, I want to jump in there. Yeah, I want to jump in there just real quick, because I think this is something just from a coaching perspective, you know, having been in the college game for as long as I was and seeing the programs that are being developed for college athletes, for uh, their physical health, their mental health, all of those things. There, there's not a lot of that for the coaches themselves. And I think we've probably talked about this on, on another podcast, uh, but I think that's where like programs like like yours are, are important, is that we can't forget about coaches, mental health and physical health. I, I, 
I know there's always extenuating circumstances and there are extremes where there's people who have conditions and they're unhealthy. But I know as an athlete, it's easy for me, easier for me to get behind what a coach is saying to me when we're talking about fitness and, uh, you know, uh, mentality or discipline when I see my coach the same way. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and so I think as coaches, we need to make sure because our universities or our clubs or whatever, whoever we work for our high schools, they're probably not providing those environments for us. We have to do it ourselves. Yeah. And I think that the program that, that you're providing coaching the bigger game is one way to really help our coaches do that better. Take care of yourself so that your coach, your players can look at you and, and they believe in you because you're, you're probably a, a very good person and, and all of these things, but what are you doing? Like I, I take the example, my wife is the extreme. I know she's the other side. She's the 1% over here <laughs> that, you know, she's like, Hey, I'm going to run fitness with our, with our players. One, because she could, and she could yeah. beat all of them probably still could to this day, but like our players wanted to play extremely hard for her because they're like, okay, well, if she can do it and right. she's a couple months pregnant, which she right. can do at times, uh, <laughs> I can do this. Like, I want to do that. So I think, you know, I think there's something to even like players that see their coaches just going out on a job yeah. or going out on a run to take their help. You know, when you go on the road with your team and you have a strict diet for your team, do you order something different because right. you're the coach because you can, well, that's not, that's probably not right. Right. You know, so anyway, yeah. I just that's kind of a hot hot button for me, and I think it's important, but I think it ties really well into how do we take care of ourselves? What kind of example are we being for our, our players um, so that we can help them be their best? We've got to try to be our best as well, and that discipline piece. And I'm I'm preaching to the choir right here. I'm preaching yes. myself at times as well. Um, plenty of times that I've I've got a strict diet for my players, and I'm sneaking on you know you know peanut M and M's or something you know for my for my travel pack, but. Uh, we've got to we've got to challenge ourselves as well to be the best that we can so that we can be the best that we are for our players. Absolutely. And it's not saying that you as a coach need to be an elite D1 athlete. That's not what we're saying. Although Marcy. No, I know. I never I never was. One, yes. So. Right. But, but <laughs> even like seeking and doing we're not saying yes. you have to be on the same regimen as your players. But if you're going to tell them, hey, you know, do 10 burpees, you know, just whatever. You should be able to do some burpees. Right. Like, you know, in. And that's something that I fully, you know, I, that's, that's something my high school coach was a very big man who told us to go run five miles all the time. And I'm like, you will run five miles, dude. Like, I, I want to say, you know, <laughs> that was my our, reaction. Our college, our college and, coach would take us on runs and he would be in the front and yeah. he's leading the way and like, okay, like I can't yeah. even catch up with the old guy, you know? Exactly. Uh, great exactly. example. Yeah. No, exactly. And that's the two, the, con- the, the contrast there is massive. If, if he would have been doing that, Guys have been like, okay, you can do it. But it's it's hard when the coach can't even do what he's asking you to do. Like not even close. Yeah. Probably couldn't even do one fifth of, of what it was. Yeah. So but anyway, we there don't... are circumstances too. Like, I mean, older coaches, like, but I do think there's just the example of taking care of yourself, you know, is is gonna be important. And and like mm-hmm. because if they're younger coaches, they can do they can do more, even demoing things yeah. as older coaches, you know, can you do it or not? But that's okay if you can't, if you're an older coach or you have some other circumstances, but even them watching like what you're eating and how you take care of yourself. Those things are important examples too, that, that we, that we, you know, not to get caught up on, we need to, you know, doing, 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 but just the examples that we, that we show our players and even being vulnerable in times where, you know, we're not at our best, but anyway, yeah. we're going other down other rabbit holes. Right. But, we don't need uh, to belabor it, but I think people no. get the point that we're talking about. And I, I do think though, that that's really what we're talking about here is we're asking our kids to be you know, our kids, whether it's high school, whether it's college, whether it's pro, who, whatever the coach is, whatever the, and, and not just soccer, not just sports, but as we say, our soccer explains leadership, but in, in organizations, if you're an organizational leader in your family, whatever it is, as a leader, you are more credible, you have more authority, you have more, you connect more with your people when you are practicing what you're preaching, right? When you are living it out and not just, it's not just words, right? Because your people will see that as hypocritical. And unfortunately, that will take away in a massive way your, you know, how much they want to, you know, perform. Will they run through a wall for you if you're saying one thing and doing another? Less likely, right? Unless, unless 
they have to. You don't want them yeah. following you just because they have to, because they know they have to to get a spot, right? Or they have to for whatever reason. So anyway, that's something that we both firmly believe in. Last second, last minute thoughts as we wrap up another, another post-match show. No, I mean, it's been another great season, half season. Uh, I know we're hitting the summer here with some other things going on. I'm excited about those, hearing those podcasts as well. I always, I remember we did a few of those earlier on. Was it last summer or something? We did a couple. I can't remember when yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was early, early on. We had early, coaching yeah. character episodes. Yeah. But there's some good stuff that comes out of that. So I'm excited to hear, hear those this summer too. And excited about what we've got in store following those. And yeah, man, just encouraged by what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, folks, with that, we're going to wrap up another show. As we've talked about, we're going to be having more coaching character episodes coming your way over the next few weeks to kind of get us through the summer. We uh, will then come back at you with new How Soccer Explains Leadership episodes and season seven in August. Sometime in August, we will get those back going. And so until then, Definitely check out the show notes for anything that you want to go back to check out and be able to, you can, you can go check out warrior way, warriorwaysoccer.com coaching the bigger game at coaching the And with all this stuff that we're talking about, we hope that you take it and you use it to help you be a better leader, a better parent, a better spouse, better friend. And you're continually reminding yourself that soccer does explain life and leadership. Thanks a lot. Have a great week.